Welcome to episode six at QITV. Today, Lori's going to stop by and we're going to talk about all kinds of different things you can do with your embroidery module that I bet you didn't know you could do. Uh, we're going to do our good, better, best on half score triangles and we're going to show you automation on a long arm. Fun stuff to come. Let's get started. go. My guest today is Miss Lori Engel Hello. from Quilting in the Valley. <laughs> um, she is an embroiderer, a phonetic machine embroidery. She does hand embroidery too. Mm -hmm. Not the same thing, but she does love her machine embroidery as well. So she's going to show us a whole bunch of stuff about today's machine embroidery and how it's not your grandma's embroidery anymore. No, it is not. Um, when I started out embroidering um, we won't say how many years ago. <laughs> I started out on a PE design, a brother, just this little tiny embroidery mm -hmm. machine. And at that time, it was one, like one of the first on the market. There was nothing there. You knew nothing about stabilizers. You oh, knew yeah. nothing about thread. I don't think they had and many so, kinds. No, there, there wasn't. And so you kind of forged through to, you know, it was enough to make you give up, yeah. but it was such a cool thing when you, when it worked. I can remember and the first time I did it mm -hmm. on my Viking and the directions, because there weren't any classes, there weren't any YouTubes. No, no. And I had it hooped upside down. <laughs> so I had, my, my fabric was up instead of down. Uh -huh. Oh dear. And I couldn't tell from the diagrams. And I'm like, why is it making yeah. this mess on the back? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. But you didn't know. No. Nobody, you know, we, today we have people that, you know, mm -hmm. we have YouTubes that yeah. we're, we're doing a lot of. And so we're teaching you on the go, you know, right. you're and you, we have a vast amount of information out there. It's back when I first started with the embroidery stuff, pretty much all you did was put stuff on a onesie or put your name on a t-shirt, stuff like that. There wasn't really much like this to no, do. No, especially in the hoop. Oh yeah. Today we have all these in the hoop designs. I think about this one right here. That this, is cute. Isn't that darling? And um, it's a recipe book holder. Mm -hmm. And so you just do this cover. This is all done in the hoop. Uh, no sewing involved, none. it just start to finish, uh -uh. it's done. These are all done in the hoop. Which is astounding. Like yeah. this one, which has, so somebody had to figure this out. So this one with the pocket on the back, you don't sew that on separately. The pocket is sewn on, but not sewn down. Right. In the hoop. Well, or in the zipper. <laughs> and the zipper. The zipper's put on there, you know. I mean, it's just. It's amazing. It is. It is really um, a lot of fun. We have, uh, look at the towels that you can do, or the pot holders. It's chenille. Mean, yeah. It's chenille, and it's all done in the hoop. Now, of course, the chenille is taken care of uh, after. Yeah, you cut that. it. You mm -hmm. cut it, and then you brush it with either a toothbrush or you can um, get a chenille brush, a chenille brush mm -hmm. that we use. Uh, how about this one? What little girl would not absolutely love this headband at Halloween? Yeah. I can see my little granddaughter. She, well, she would wear this all year. I mean, <laughs> she would. I mean, she's just kind of like a diva and she would think she's pretty cool. But I mean, how cool is that? And that's made all done, hoop. made in the hoop. And then you put it all to, you know, do all of the little decorations. Um, this one here, pillows, all done in the hoop from start to finish. Even the flange is mm -hmm. put in, in, done in the hoop. And, uh, this particular one, there's actually a whole quilt that yes. Broomhill does. Um, and the piecing is done. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. It just, it's just amazing what we can do. Um, and then we have the, the little uh, onesies. Of course, this is what we were used to yep. be doing. Yep. And yet now they've even come up with um, some really cute designs for the onesies. Mug rugs. How about mug rugs? The great presence for mm -hmm. teachers. Uh, like this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, 
you know, different, different people, and it's all done in the hoop. So, I, you know, it's just a, a, really an array of things that you can do. It kind of boggles the mind it how does. somebody figured out how to make this without having to sew anything. <laughs> well, it boggles the mind that somebody actually made a machine that can, that do, can do this, can do yeah. this and, and, th and you know, think it through. Like, look at the stitch here. The fringe. Yeah. That's yeah. a stitch. Yeah. And and when you're all done stitching it, you turn it over to the back, clip your bobbin, your bobbin threads, and then that just pulls out. Sure and enough. it's just right there. And whoever thought at any point in time we were going to be stitching on Cards. cardstock. And then coloring them in with a cut with a watercolor Water pencils. Pencil. Yeah. Yeah. So you make your own greeting cards in your embroidery machine. That's pretty slick. Yeah. It is. It's really a lot of fun. So it's it's just non-ending, mm -hmm. and they're constantly coming up with new things. I mean, how how cute is this for a Christmas pillow, and or a gift or that? And then and then we have ornaments. Ornaments mm -hmm. aren't those cute? And there's a lot of different um, designs out there for ornaments that you can do. So, you know, what I kind of like to talk about, too, is the different types of threads mm -hmm. that you can use and the different types of stabilizers that are available today. But we have some thread here. Mm -hmm. One of our thread boxes. So this is isocord thread. Yeah. And it's a nice thread. And, you know, what's really neat is that um, our Becky has come up with a way of building your mm -hmm. stash on Isocord because, frankly, you're not going to go out and buy every color. Most of us aren't anyway. No. Well, you you're going to. to build it as you do your designs. But Becky has come up with a way. We have a thread club mm -hmm. that you can um, join and build your Isocord mm -hmm. stash. Five With, themed spools yep, a month. Yep. And that, I mean, and that's a great way of doing it. Mm -hmm. Now, we should mention there are many other threads on the market. So yeah. there is Floriani. There is I like uh, Floriani. Sulky. There is uh, Haberdash. Uh -huh. There is, what else? What am I missing? Um, what's the one that they use for quilting that Lou uses? Oh, oh Glide. Glide mm -hmm. is one. Um, also, we, ju we have that new one that's it, ever... Sure. Ever so Ever so mm -hmm. You know, and the thing is, is that with the threads, sometimes you have to just, they'll break. Mm -hmm. The threads will break. Now, I've never had that happen with Isocord. No. But I, Glide, for instance, it will break, but you just learn how to turn your mm -hmm. machine down. Turn the speed down. Turn the speed down. Um, Floriani, for instance, has wonderful metallics. Oh, but they will break. Oh. <laughs> You yeah. got to turn your speed you down. You have to turn your speed down. And sulky is is uh, uh, rayon. Right. So it's a natural fiber. It will break. You have to turn your speed down. That's part of the reason that we use Isocord here at Quilting in the Valley is because we sell the Bernina machines, which yeah. are high speed machines. And Isocord is high tensile strength poly. And it will take the speed. Mm -hmm. Part of the reason we use this. So and this it's is also a, color fast. And it's color fast, which some of the natural fiber threads are right. not. They will bleed. These won't. Then that's part of why we use Isocord. But there's lots of other threads on the market that you should try out mm -hmm. just to get different effects yeah. and different techniques. But when you're doing a, an embroidery, if you look at this, look at all the different shades that are just that are in this. And so you want to have that stepping stone of shades in order to get a nice effect. Well, that's what gives you your dimension. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Look at all the different colors of teal. Mm -hmm. There's three different colors of teal right there. Look at how many greens there are. And that's to get that depth of design, to get it to, to kind of look multidimensional. Right. Um, and so you can, I mean, look at right here. That's all up in here is like, there's like, I think five different colors in there. One, two, three. Yeah, I think so. You know, there's the purple. Well, plus that, yeah. yeah. And so... You need those colors. And it's really frustrating if you're going to go and you're going to do something like this and you only have four or five different colors. You can't, you can't do it. You can't it. do that. You can't do it. If you got in the middle of that and you had four greens and you needed five to do the design, mm -hmm. you'd be like, doggone it. 
there's many tools that are available now today for embroidery. So we have different sets of scissors. This is a this is a great set of scissors. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I want you to look at is that you the have to curve, have a pair of those. Yeah. It's the, the curve in it. So when you're doing embroidery, you want you want to be able to get right in on the hoop because you're not gonna you want to cut those threads right mm -hmm. close. Well, if you have a regular pair of scissors, you can't get right real close well, to it. Well, because your hoop is up here pushing your right, mm -hmm. right. And so this this curve just comes in, and you're just able to cut your um, threads or your fabrics. Or if you do it like this, you sew a larger piece of fabric on, mm -hmm. then you cut down, and that's what where these scissors right here these are like my favorite they're like the you, you squeezers. squeezers and then you can get right in there and just get right up mm -hmm. just by squeezing them so the tools your tools make your job much easier now we all have um kimberbell just came out with this set mm -hmm. and um let's get it up there right but they've just come out with this set that Kimberbell is a company. A lot of these lot things of these are, are Kimberbell. Kimberbell. And so they have a lot of cute little designs. And so they've come up, I think, even with some stabilizers. Yes, they have new stabilizers own. as well. And that. So, so let's so, talk just a second there because you mentioned Kimberbell. So there's a lot of different things on the market. So there's Kimberbell, which is... Um, this is Kimberbell. These. And I this think those is over there. All of these. There's yeah. Pickle Pie, which is another nice, uh, robust design collection. This one, I believe, is a Pickle Pie. Yeah. Then there's Scissor Tail Stitches, which is a division and of that's OESD. What this is. This is Scissor Tail. That's Scissor Tail. And this, this is a design collection that you're actually piecing blocks in the hoop mm -hmm. to make an entire quilt, which is really cool. Such neat stuff. Yeah. Well, and look at this one. I, I think this one is the cutest. It's a puzzle. You put this together, and you're um, for little kids that make floor make puzzles. A, yeah, floor floor puzzles. How cool is that? There's all kinds of you fun know? stuff to do. So, um, you know, and then there's also there's home deck. Mm -hmm. There's a lot. These are more of a cutesy. I mean, they're they're cute. Some of them. I mean, this is that this one. Is, but I would consider this home deck. Yes. More home deck. Yes. And there's tons of pat, um, designs out there for home deck. So there's that. Then we're going to talk about <laughs> our bird's nest kit. You are invariably going to get a bird's nest at some point. And when it goes, it will glue itself to the throat yeah. plate. <laughs> yeah. But with this, you're able to kind, you just get this up underneath that and you slide this and you can cut those threads right mm -hmm. off and, and get that um, hoop off. This is, this is, to me, this is like an invaluable I've tool. I've used this more than I want to yeah. admit. Yeah, it's really great. How about stabilizers? So nowadays we've got wash away, Mm -hmm. Tear away, cut away, cut away, and you have those in different weights, weights sizes. Yeah, um, there's um, there aqua mesh. There's stable um, stick. The what's the one that goes on the topper? Uh, toppers for like towels. Mm -hmm. If you're doing towels or different things that have um, a pile to them, and so it keeps those stitches up on top is yeah. what it does. So stabilizers, um, one of the things that we just got in that I was really, really liked was the, um, it's actually batting for embroidery. Yes. It's not batting. Um, yeah, batting. Batting. For embroidery. Mm -hmm. And it is very fine and, and works well. And I think that would have been nice for this. Uh-huh. It would have been. Yeah. It wasn't out when this was made. But to make this little bag, to have a little bit more body using that batting, I think, would make would this help. a little it more would. substantial. Uh -huh. I agree. Um, and the thing is, is that with the embroidery, you're going to you're going to have failures and you're going to have successes. And that's why I would never, if I was doing a quilt, it I'm going to try that design out first. Yes. And and make sure that the digitizing because 
digitizing designs, which is what all of these things have been digitized. Mm -hmm. And so you are going to, you, one digitizer does not fit all. Right. You can get some really great digitized designs and you can get some really bad. So to that point, there's a bunch of free shareware places mm -hmm. uh, where uh, we won't name any right now, but you can go on and, and get copyright free embroidery designs that somebody has digitized on their own. They've, they've purchased the software and they've mm -hmm. learned how to do it. And they've digitized the design. That does not mean that they know enough to make sure that the thread breaks are all in the right place or that things line up mm -hmm. the, or where the they're fill, supposed to or the that fill the fill stitches. is right. Yeah. Yeah. So just if you're going to download some of that free stuff, test it out first before you put it on your final project just to make sure it's going to work. Right. So the one last thing we should talk about is something we weren't able to do before because of the lack of size in the hoops right. Yeah, is in the hoop quilting. Mm -hmm. So if you're making a quilt, you can actually do very professional looking quilting using your embroidery machine and one of these guys. So yeah. this, this is a magnetic hoop. So instead of having to squash your stuff down into a traditional hoop with your batting, your backing mm -hmm. and your front and everything, you're this is just, just, it just lays right on top of everything yeah. and it, and it's a strong mag, you know, magnet. Mm -hmm. It really helps you know with that with if that's what you're wanting to do is that yeah. quilting in the hoop and well, a lot of people today I mean we have these embroidery machines use them to the max with the great big throat spaces so you can yeah. use big hoops yeah, yeah yeah so that magnetic hoop is really something that really change and there's so many designs out there available for quilting in the hoop yes there is there's, there's a whole series of I think it's called Quilt in the Hoop. Mm -hmm. um, books with CDs attached to them with designs in them. There's a whole series of books for that. Well, and another thing is, is that don't limit it, your embroidery machine just to this. There's actually whole quilts that mm -hmm. are done with uh, the embroidery. And Tile they're scenes. beautiful. Mm -hmm. So today's embroidery is not like it used to be. It is a rabbit hole that you can get sucked down into pretty quickly. Um, we do have a lot of people that come and look at machines and they're like, oh, I don't want to, I would never do embroidery like Carol. Yeah. Yeah. Carol said it. <laughs> oh, I would never do it. And, and she, I said, yes, you will. And she goes, no, 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 I'm not going to do it. And, um, she take, she took it. Well, she came to the class, the class. mastery mm -hmm, class mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and she was like, Oh my God, I'm good. I love this, you know? And, <laughs> and so, you know, she had a machine, she had an embroidery machine. Mm -hmm. And this is what happens a lot of times is that people have them and they never use them. Right. And so what our, our goal is, is to get people into using them because once you yeah. start, it, you're going to, you're just going to keep going. And again, we go back to, if you're going to get a machine like this, that is capable of so much stuff, Learn to use them. Make yeah. use of this. Get your money's worth out of it because there's so many things you can make and it's so much fun. It is. It is. <laughs> you know, we had that one um, design with the quilt that you could do the quilt. Mm -hmm. Well, think about separating that and doing a quilt block and then doing an embroidery oh, block yeah. and then and designing your own quilt. That'd be fun. With the, it would be. Yeah. There's all kinds of stuff you can yeah. do. Yeah. It's cool. And it's not cheating. Mm -mm. No. And that's the thing that's a lot of people have said to me because I'm a hand. I love hand work. You know, they'll say, well, yeah, but it's not like hand work. No, no it's, it's not. not. <laughs> it's not even meant to be like no. hand work. It's a whole it, different thing. It doesn't replace hand work. Mm -mm. It's just another avenue to, to be creative. And it's a whole different skill set, too. Yeah. So you work your way up. You don't pick the most difficult thing to start with. You work your way mm -hmm. up in this. But once you get going, there's so many neat things you can do. Well, so that's, that's our that's our that's yeah. our cheerleading section yeah. about yeah. machine embroidery. You need to try it. If you haven't tried it, J you need to. You need to. Here we are, you guys. We're going to do our good, better, best segment again. This time it's all about half square triangles. So I'm going to show you um, three different ways you can do half square triangles. The first one I'm going to show you is from Cluck Cluck Sew, and it is diagonal seam tape. So it's a roll of tape, and it comes like this, and you just get it started. 
and you line it up in the corner to the other corner. Tear it off, and there you go. You've marked your half square triangle. Your seam lines are the black lines, your center line and your cut line is the red line. So that's one way. This is the good way. Um, and I'm gonna say it's good because it's $7.99. There's 10 yards on this roll. So it's fairly expensive to do a relatively large quilt with this particular technique. Additionally, you have to be really careful. So I was slightly off of my point on this one. It's sticky, it's repositionable, so I can keep moving it around. But you do have to be fairly careful and work with that to make sure you get it right. It's a good way to do it. It's accurate once you get it on there. Now let's talk about better. This is from the quick quarter ruler. You see it's got a point here. You take the point, you line it up in your corner, and then you bring the openings that you see down to your other corner. You take your fabric marking pen, and et voila, I have marked this half square triangle. All I do is sew a quarter inch on that side, sew a quarter inch on that side, and cut it in half. Easy peasy. This is fairly cost effective. This is, what is this? This is $5.99 for this little tool. And it's fairly long. It's a 12 inch, so you could do up to a 12 inch quarter square diagonal marking. This is my best. I love this. This is a CD. On this CD, this is called Triangulations, and it is Bear Paw Productions. Triangulations is the bomb. So I put, the, I don't have to do any programming. I don't have to know how to use anything. I just put this CD in my computer, open it, scroll down to the right finished size quarter square triangles that I need, or flying geese, or half square triangles, print them off, so this is half square triangles right here. So all I have to do is scroll down to the size I need. This is one and a half inch finished half square triangles. Easy peasy. Pin it on my fabric and sew on the lines. You sew on the dotted lines. You cut on the solid lines. And then you are going to get, how many are you gonna get? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. You're gonna get 11 half square triangles by sewing on this sheet of paper. And you can do it over and over and over again. And it comes in, I forget how many different sizes. I mean, it's crazy. Um, half inch to four inch in quarter inch increments. That's on half squares. You can also do half inch to seven and a half inch in one sixteenth inch increments. Quarter squares, you do three quarter inch to seven and a half inch finished in one eighth inch increments. Flying geese, you know how your points never come out right in your flying geese? <laughs> Print off the finished size flying geese, sew it on there and they're perfect. One half inch by one inch to three and three quarter inch by seven and a half inch flying geese and it's formatted to fit on letter size paper in your printer. That's about as easy as you could get. This one's $27.99 for this, and you can use it for the rest of your life. You just print off the right size and off you go, and you get perfect half square, quarter square, or flying geese units out of this. So again, we got our good. This is the seam tape. It's literally tape. You put it on there. When you're finished sewing, you gotta peel all that off. You've got your quick quarter ruler where you mark from corner to corner, sew on a quarter inch on either side and then cut, or triangulations. Print off the page that corresponds to the quarter square, half square, or flying geese units that you need and sew right on it. They're perfect. Good, better, best for today. Thanks. Hello everybody, we're gonna show you the Q24 today. This is such a cool machine, and I know a lot of you probably haven't seen one of these automated machines work, so I'm gonna give you a little heads up on how they work. So I have my quilt is already loaded on the machine, so I've got my backing, my batting, 
and I've already basted down my quilt top and the rails are engaged. Everything's nice and tight. Everything's where it's supposed to be. And I'm going to use Qmatic, which is the automated portion of the Q24 where it does it all by itself. It's like magic. So let me show you how this works. Now I'm going to go into my design files and I'm going to choose something to put on here. And let's see. I'm kind of liking that one. So I've just chosen this design. So now I've put it up here on my screen. I'm going to make it a smidge bigger. And maybe even a smidge bigger net. I'm going to line it right up in my corner there. And then I'm going to make it go all the way across. And then I'm going to copy it and I'm going to make another one to go right below it. Hopefully you guys can see how stinking easy this is. Let's see. I want to group my stuff. And now I'm going to cut off this outside edge because it's outside of my safe area. Oh, I didn't get that grouped. Group. There. Now I'm going to cut off this outside edge right there. Poof, I have a design all ready to go. So all I need to do at this point is push the button. And it's thinking it's going to head off on over there in just a second. There we go. Now you can see the screen is engaged. Now the machine is moving off by itself. off to our start point. And when it gets to where it wants to start, it is going to tell me to bring up the bobbin thread so that I don't have yucky on the back. And I do that. I hit go. And we're quilting. So hopefully you've picked up by just this little demonstration that this machine is really easy to use. Um, this uh, Bernina long arm is a little different from some of the other long arms on the market in that it does not take long arm needles. It just takes a regular domestic needle. It's like you using your sewing machine. Um, it's automated tension. I don't have to check my tension. I don't have to mess with my tension ever. It's always been spot on. Um, all of my thread path is up in the front. I don't have to go to the back of the machine for anything. It's all right up here. I, this is just an easy to use machine. The Qmatic itself, the function on that is really easy to learn how to use and it just stitches beautifully. So if you were right up on top of this like I am, you would see all these beautiful Bernina even stitches. Does a beautiful job. So all I have to do at this point is I just have to kind of babysit it and watch to make sure that I don't have any thread breaks or anything going on like that. Um, but otherwise, it's pretty much just going to do its thing until these two rows are done. Then I'm going to rotate the quilt up on those rails and hit the go button again. And it's going to do the next row. That's all there is to it. And it just comes out just perfect. So that's it for episode six of QITV. I uh, hope you enjoyed our embroidery segment and I hope you enjoyed getting a sneak peek into what a Bernina Qmatic can do. This automation stuff is really fascinating to watch. So I'm gonna sit here and watch this thing finish. Thanks for joining us, we appreciate you and we'll see you next time.